how do we implement those impossible travel rules? So in the video description of all my videos, you know that there is a, you should probably know by now that there's a link to a public box folder. In there, just in case that you don't know it, at the end of every of uh, these three pages of stuff, you're going to find a PDF with links to all of my videos. These are nicely organized. I find it a lot easier to, even when I need to remember something that I forgot in Curator, I go to this list and do a Control F and find what I want and even believe it or not, I watch my own videos as well. So in that uh, link, what you the latest folder I added is actually the Impossible Trouble Rules folder. What you'll have in there are these things. Let me go back to it. You're going to find two rules. The one that populates the reference set, the ones that did, fires the rules, and that nice search that Dylan created. Now, all you need to do is download these and you go into Curator. This is all unsupported and you'll see that it's not digitally signed. You go here uh, under Extension Management and you add that package and that rule, boom, and the reference sets and all the components that it needs comes to you and is ready. Those are ready to be used. More on the search later. How you add that. Now let's actually take a look at those uh, rules. And, and by the way, I have that rule that I tested it in here, and you see that that is actually working with uh, some logs. Let's let's uh, go and look for that rule. So let's take a look at the first rule: the populate impossible travel reference. Let's see it here from the editor. Notice that as, as we said, as, as I said in the introduction, anything that is categorized as authentication success for whatever log source it is, meets the first condition. The second one is evaluated. I need to have a username on those logs, on whatever it is. If I don't have it, then I cannot use this rule that the evaluation stop here. But if I do, I move to the next one. And the next one is remote to local. I only want this to fire, obviously, when it comes from somebody that is not part of my network. How do I achieve that? Well, I, I need to make sure that in my network hierarchy, I have everything that is local, including all those cloud providers that I use because they are really part of my network. So when they are, this is not coming from my normal, you know, users and stuff, then uh, I move into the next thing. Notice that what this one is uh, actually doing is is executing the geolookup function with the source IP that I extracted from this log source. And it's actually looking at the city name and making sure that there is one, because sometimes, because of the max mine database or whatever it is the reason, I mean, if I don't get a city name, uh, is null basically what I'm what is not there or is blanked? I cannot use this rule, so this 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 is not going to fire. So when those conditions are met to be true, then what we do is that we add into a, that reference table. Notice that the key is the username, and the entries are the IP address you log in from, and the time. That's going to be added in there. Let's actually see one reference table that I have in this example that I tested already. And to do that, I use my reference data management app. And uh, when I look into the reference table, I find that impossible travel one in here. And I tested it with, uh, with some logs from Dylan, and we see that that entry got populated. That's rule number one. Let's actually take a look at the role number two because this may require some tuning to deal with the constraints that I mentioned in the first part of the video. Let me actually see it in the editor. So again, the first condition is similar as the previous one, so I'm not going to go about that. 
The important one is actually here. This is the what makes this one different. So, uh, and this looks a, little, looks a little geeky, but what is in here is two things. Notice that we are getting the distance between the two IPs. The one that I log in that was already in my reference table because I log in already and the one I just saw coming and I compute the distance. And notice that I devised the distance between the tr time between the two timestamps. And basically, you know, distance over time gives you velocity. And when the velocity is 1,600 kilometers per hour, uh, I would say that that is impossible travel. But you can tune that parameter to whatever fits in your particular case. Again, taking into consideration the telcos and different things. This is something that you need to test and try. And the other condition, and you can actually put this as a separate condition itself, is actually the distance being larger than 800 kilometers. So, you know, again, you tune this up, but if these things are true, meaning that that's an impossible travel, then this one fires an offense, right? As we can see here. And you will get this when you import all this. And this is the part in which we add that user into a reference set. So if you actually want to limit this to fire only once, what you need to do is add a condition after this is met in here that the user is not on that table already. Because I only want this to fire once. If it's in the table already, I'm not going to keep on firing because I, I assume that my SOC team investigated this. It is good. And the guys it's just in vacation or in a business assignment in another country, whatever is, is the case. Now for the last part, which is the search. So you may want to, actually, when you are investigating this offense, you may want to have this impossible travel search in here. And when you click on it, it will give for the username involving this particular offense it will get all the places where he has, has actually logged in from and this is the country it then has been in the US as you see there USDO so the formatting in this can be improved but you know it, it, I think this is good enough uh, to begin so how do you make this well in that public box folder in impossible travel from Dylan you get this file, you just open it up, it's a text file, you get an AQL query, you grab it and I, uh, I assume that you have already downloaded this uh, analyst custom searches for Curator, if you don't then go to the App Exchange and do so and what you do here is that you will be adding a new search you put it, you give it a name, as you see it's impossible to travel, the one I gave, you paste here the content of that, you make it here offense type code uh, 3, uh, and uh, that should be it, let me actually edit that particular uh, the, the one that I entered it before, and then you save it and, and it's part of your offense and, and you want that type code to be 3 because you wanted it to work with the username of that particular offense. So I hope that these uh, two videos can help you implement impossible rules into Curator. Maybe, uh, you know, IBM at one point cracked this out better and makes it a uh, standard app. I, I have no clue whether they will do that or not, but uh, I, this at least we can help you in, in, in lieu of all the credential stealing, ransomware attacks and all the things that we are seeing, that might be something useful for you to actually have.